We're at the Goldfields Raceway in the Free State for more West Bank Modified Racing's entertainment on wheels. It's about speed, about cars coming sideways out of corners. It's about power and excitement when these mighty cars take to the track. This new West Bank V8 formula only started in February this year and saw really South Africa's second most popular form of motorsport watched by a growing number of motor racing fans. Turn up for the books was that 21-year-old Gary Fomata took pole position in his first race at the Goldfields Raceway in his 700 horsepower Ford Telstar. It's nice to set the car in pole position for the first time this year. The uh, car's been going very well um, all weekend. Johan and them have put a lot of effort into the car, got a new engine in the car as well, so it's looking very good. Uh, the pole position time, I feel I could have gone a little bit faster, but um, it's good enough to be on pole, so I suppose we have to be happy with that. Yeah, today we got it right. I think Jeff did his homework. You know, he always amazes me. I mean, I battle, 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 and he said, well, we'll try this, we'll try that. And this morning I got in the car, it was a different motor car, and it was great. It handled well, and it wasn't that difficult to put in the time. Willie on the second row showing that the uh, Chev certainly can go here. Yeah, it looks like it. My Chev engine's going fairly well, although it's getting a bit tired. But the Fords definitely have a little bit more grunt down the straight. Larry, a new 18-degree Pontiac motor seems to have made the difference. Roger, right, yeah, we came down with the old 23-degree, and the guys worked Thursday evening, put the 18-degree motor in, and uh, it's gone three seconds a lap quicker. So we're delighted. Interesting to see in position number six, Steve Wyndham heading up the West Bank Cup category in his Ford Telstar. 21 cars are now being built for West Bank Modified Racing. The latest is a brand new Ford Telstar, entered by Brian Cook and sponsored by First Call Cellular Telephones. Well, Roger, we're absolutely delighted. As you know, we uh, got this motor car from Owen Ashley down in the Cape. We put it together up here in Johannesburg with the help from JB Engineering. And with First Call coming on board to sponsor the car and Steve Wyndham on driving it, it's done wonders. It turned a wheel first time yesterday and he's got it on the pole today. It's looking good. Fifteen of these mighty cars off on their parade lap, headed up by Gary Fomato, having his first look at the Goldfields Raceway circuit in that Gearmax Ford Telstar. It's an eight lap race over the 4.1 Goldfields Raceway. That's 33 k's are going to be racing as they go along the straight warming up their tyres. The high speeds attained on that ultra fast long straight at the Goldfields circuit is not everyone's cup of tea. As a personal opinion, I think it's suicidal. It's crazy. They've got to slow these cars down. You don't want a circuit where you've got a straight like this. I mean, you're doing over 300 kilometers an hour. Something goes wrong here, you're history. And I, mean, I don't think there's anybody here who wants to be history. Speed down the straight, worry you? No, um, it's pretty hairy when you get to the end of the straight. I think we're doing about in the region of 300 kilometers per hour, but uh, we're all going in the same direction and hopefully it'll stay like that. Awesome speed for these all South African built motor cars as they head down to the end of the straight and get some heat into those tyres. Now behind the Ford Falcon, taking them around to the start finish, Gary Fomato is going to dictate the pace across the line as the man on pole position. Alongside him, Peter Lindenberg's going to be watching his every move to get a good start into the S's that follow 200 metres away from the line. In with Ray Wolford down in the West Bank Cup class, that's for 400 horsepower cars. They're ready for the off. Waiting for the green, just listen to them. We're in business, and Formada goes to the inside as he goes for the S's at 190 k's an hour on his tail as Peter Lindbergh in the Gestetten Ford and Willie Hepburn in that orange car is in third position, the first the Chevy. The Sonics cars, Larry Wolford in fourth position as they slide their way through at over 210 k's an hour. One of the stars of this racing, Patrick Sinn from Queenstown, takes one car on his way down this long straight. And Johnny Eco just lost his under tray. It nearly hits Ray Wolford. As they get onto the brakes, they haul them down from 300 k's an hour, down to first gear, through here at 130 k's an hour. They're all safely through. In with, Ray, in with uh, Patrick Seddon, Ray Wolford's just ahead of him. And in the lead, and opened a gap, he's got 20 metres over Lindenberg, is Gary Fomata. Willie Hepburn's third. Fourth is Ben Morgan, up from sixth position on the grid. And Wyndham's in amongst those A-class or challenge cars. In again with Patrick Seddon, he's still got Wilford. That's the ex Peter Lindenberg. Opal is ahead of him. That stars and stripes root beer car is really going and being driven by that young champion of former years. And that's little Ray Wilford's birthday today. As Johnny Eco goes a little bit wide, slides his way down as they come into West Bank corners. They all come safely through here. It's the end of lap one. Wilford comes through with Johnny Eco in his tail. And there's Wyndham leading the cup class, the 400 uh, horsepower class. And Andy Dixon's lost it. 
He came out of West Bank, cornered, lost control and headed for that pit wall and has done terminal damage to that car. That's a real hard one. In the meantime, up at the front, Formato's opened up a bigger gap. Lindenberg's next. The red car is uh, Willie Hepburn. Then it's Ben Morgan who's on the charge. Off it's got Johnny Yeager cutting the corner. Goes right across the S and that big chef Monte Carlo gets his mind right and he's back on the circuit and chasing after Larry Wolfert. And Andy Dixon's car is going to stay there a long, long time. It's going to be difficult for those marshals to move that car and they sure to bring the safety car out. But they haven't done so yet. It's still Formato up in the front. And then it is Peter Lindenberg down through those gears, right down to first gear, Hepburn, Ben Morganroot's next, and then it's Larry Wolford. Beautiful Ford Falcon of Morganroot is leading the championship at the moment, and he's being well driven by that uh, racer from Ranfortane. It's Formata sliding their way over the bridge at Conti Corner and around the Conti Complex as we go in there with Morganroot ahead of him. He sees Willie Hepburn. And he's got to be so carefully putting the power on here. It's Derek van Black next in the Bulldog Pub and Grill. Ford Falcon, he's got Johnny Eckert now. And Steve Windham has got in amongst those 700 horsepower cars in that yellow and white first call car. He's right in there with him. And what a drive he's having on his debut drive in a V8. Steve Windham, he won down the captain's from Black, gets touched by Eckert. Having a dramatic race from Black goes into the pit wall as they come past uh, Andy Dixon's stricken car. And the clerk of the course, that is... Uh, Pete van der Waal brings out the safety car side. They slow them all down. They'll have to remain in position while the marshals get that uh, wrecked car off the circuit. There it is, the Ford Falcon. Nice big muscle car from Australia. Four litres, six cylinders, 24 valves. The right motor car to lead these cars around the track. 700 horsepower cars are in front. There's that yellow and white first called car. That's the first of the 400 cars being driven there by Steve Windham. And while the cars are circulating in line and stern around the circuit, we spoke to Brian Cook, the chairman of the West Bank Modified Association. Brian, what's the idea of bringing the safety car out during the race? Roger, the idea is, as you've noted, people that watch American racing, they use the safety car quite extensively in PPG, IndyCar, and also obviously in NASCAR and Trans Am. The idea behind it is that it, it, instead of red flagging the race and bringing all the cars back to a dummy grid and a restart situation, it's a preferred way of doing it to actually keep the cars rolling with the pace car on the circuit so that it, 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 um, there are unnecessary delays in the day's program. It assists with that and I think the competitors also prefer that system. How long can you keep the safety car out for? Roger, the idea is, is that the safety car can run for up to four laps with the field behind after the fourth lap completed by the safety car, each lap completed after that, one lap is deducted from the race distance. Of course some of these cars can run out of gas. Absolutely, that's the problem. You see, we have a situation now today where we have to run a maximum now of seven racing laps because the pace car having done five laps, we've now dropped one lap off the eight lap race. This has closed the whole field up and Ray Wolford is making for the pits in a hurry there. On his birthday, he's having some sort of problems as he comes into the pit. The safety car is still on the circuit. They've got to stay in line of turn. Comes quickly in to make an urgent call. He's got a loose gear lever and he wants it tight and quickly. He's got to get in behind that field. Very nice turned out car. Uh, that's the ex Peter Lindenberg car, as we say, and being well driven there by this young Ray Wolford. He's the nephew of Larry Wolford up there in the 700 horsepower class. Just listen to that big V8 getaway. Lots of low down grunt as he gets back onto the circuit and heads off after the field. Here they are, they've all closed up. Not good luck there for Gary Formati. He's now got the competition back on his back bumper. Wyndham is in, the, in amongst those 700 horsepower cars. The green light is going. It's got to be a start to perfection. Gary Formati has got his foot down. He's opened a gap and he's in fact opened up another 50 meters over Lindenburg. He's caught them all on the hop. Willie Hepburn is third and then it is Ben Morganut into the S's. They're doing 190 k's as they slide here and there and they get into this long sleep and, uh, sweep. It's one of the longest and most frightening corners in South African motor racing. As you see, Lindenberg get it sideways and Willie Hepburn painting black lines on the road as they head down this long straight. It's one and a half k's. This is all about high speed slip streaming and late braking. This is what it sounds like inside the Morgan Rood car. 300 k's an hour in that RDI mill at hard work. Down into first gear. It's Lindenberg second. Willie Hepburn still hanging on to third. And Morgan Rood is not getting any closer. Then it's Larry Wolf with the Sonics Opal. Johnny Ecote has made his way up now at the back of the 700 horsepower cars. And here's Wyndham with Neville Rousseau and that Barnett Auto Spares car is closing up at him. Set in his next. That's the X uh, Mazda, the RX4 Mazda, now with Ford Power. It's Formata, still with a nice, comfortable lead. 
He can lead from the front from Fomoda. The pressure doesn't seem to get to him. As you can see, if you put your foot down too early, these cars get sideways. Johnny Eco, nice looking Monte Carlo. And Wyndham is hanging on to him as they go around the Conti uh, complex and head up towards Marlham Corner. Here they into the double uh, left hand at Marlham. They're the sponsors for the day. They're down in Valcom all about clutches and brakes on Marlham as Lindenberg keeps pushing on as hard as he can. And so does Willie Hepburn. It's Formato in the front. He's running out of gas. He just makes it to the line with Lindenburg closing. And Willie Hepburn in third spot. Ben Morgan Root a little bit further back. So Gary Formato has his first win of the season. Gary, it's taking you a few races, but a win at last. Eventually, yeah. I must uh, thank John Kutsia and his guys very much for the effort they've put in. Um, I crashed the car last week. The guys have worked all three weekends and late at nights and got it going very nice. And we eventually won a race. It's been a long time coming. And you don't get phased by pressure leading this field around? Uh, not at all. Um, my main concern was to get out the sweep um, pretty fast, you know, for the straight, so the guys couldn't slipstream me. Uh, around the back, I looked after the car, looked after the brakes, so it was actually quite easy. So. What did you think when the safety car came out? You must have thought, oh no, they're all going to catch me up. Well, I just thought to myself that, thank God I watched uh, the indie races on TV, so I knew what to do with the, with, under the, with the safety car. But yeah, I had to think about it. Um, I ran out of petrol on the last lap because we did four extra laps. So we were really lucky to actually have won the race. The team absolutely thrilled with Gary's first win and he set up a new lap record into the bargain. Have a look in sixth position, Steve Windham, his debut drive in the first call. Telstar also won his class. In fact, it's been a good couple of weeks of motorsport for Steve Windham. Yeah, we've had a, a good run lately. we had a good run in Cape Town with a group in Telstar. And now again, thanks to Brian Cook for letting me drive. Uh, we've, we've won again, yeah. And you were mixing it with the more powerful engine cars? Yes, we actually got the car to handle very well. First time out, we only ran the car for the first time yesterday. And we ran it in the engine, the brand new engine, and then set it up. So we, didn't have, we only had two sessions to set it up, but it's actually going very well. I was very quick through the sweep. And then the Class A cars catch me down the back straight again. And enjoyable to drive? Yes, great fun. Lots of power if you whack it, you know, get the backside out and good fun. Time for another eight lapper, 33 k's of racing. 14 cars come to the line. We've, uh, we've lost Gary, Andy Dixon in this one. And there's Johan Ferry, multiple West Bank champion. He's the team manager for the Gary Fomato car. He actually gets more nervous managing this team than driving himself and winning championships. Off on the parade lap. And Ben Morgan, who's lost his clutch, even JC Erasmus from Goodyear helps to give him a push into action as they get the big uh, 700 horsepower RDR Ford fired into action. And he's intent on improving his fourth position as you see here as they come through the S's. Derek van Bloek nicely turned out motor car. He's recovered from his spin. And a little bit further back, that white car is uh, Martin van Zimmerman from East London. He uh, lunched the motor during practice and is using the Willie Hepburn spare motor car. This is the view from Ben Morgan Root's car as they desperately warm up these big Goodyear Avon and Dunlop tyres heading down the straight. They look awesome, these motor cars. They are. They are quick. They do 300 k's an hour. Four-speed gearboxes, the Jericho boxes. They've got Detroit locker rear axles. Very unsophisticated motor cars that are hard to drive and go very, very quickly. Here's the thunder again. Gary Dick takes the pace when he's good and ready, but Willie Hepburn tries to sneak around the outside. Formato's going for the inside of the S's. He gives the Pindlenburg a little nick. He gets another nick from the other side from Willie Hepburn. The only man that didn't hit him in that was Ben Morgan Root. And uh, already Formato is getting it sideways around the sweep. We're sitting alongside Patrick, sitting on the right-hand side of the motor car. It's wild out there as they hang onto the steering wheel ahead of him. He's got uh, the Sabat Opel there of Linton Dunkley in the 400 horsepower Opel. As at last the straight arrives, he's in third gear. He'll be going up to 235 k's an hour on the gearing that they've got here as they head down that long straight at 275 k's an hour. Back with the leaders. Listen to that roar. Formato, Willie Hepburn, a lot closer. And Morgan Root is right on Lindenberg's tail. Wilford, Johnny Eco. Patrick Seddon tries his luck on the inside of uh, Linton Duncan. He doesn't quite make it as they go around that tightening corner. Formato looks so in control and relaxed behind that wheel. He's uh, driven Formula 3000 cars over in Europe. And Morgan Root is a lot closer to the Gestetner Ford Telstar of Peter Lindenberg as he gets away from him on the uh, Continental Complex. They're heading up towards Marlin Corner. And Morgan Root's looking for it. Willie Hepburn's ahead in that orange or red motor car. They're going to the outside. He's under pressure. It's Lindenberg. Morgan Root in that four speed Ford Falcon is after him with a vengeance. As they come around West Bank Corner, they're sliding into view at 140 k's an hour. And a lovely roar of those cars in amongst a different sound there from Morgan Root. You'd hear it, 
It screams away. You can hear it there. It screams away, sounding more like a Mazda with an 18 to 1 exhaust pipe as they all come streaming through. And uh, Steve Windham is still leading that cup cast car. Here they're going to the S's. They're sliding now. Those tyres are getting good and hot. And Willie Hepburn is showing there's still life in those Chef motors yet. There's no doubt about it. He hasn't got the aerodynamics of these other cars. They've got very flat wings to give them speed down the straight. And Morgan Root is going for it. But that Yates Ford of Lindenburg, it's the only one in captivity outside the straights. Robert Yates' motor is pulling away. He wasn't even getting a tow as they get onto the brake markers down into Castle Corner. From Otto. It's still Hepburn, and Lind Lindenberg just looks at his mirrors and he sees a very determined Ben Morgan route. The Sonics Opal of Larry Wolford, here's Johnny Eco having one of his best drives of the season. Patrick Seddon is starting to line up, Linton Dunkley wants third spot. Hit him, he's got Neville Rousseau as they come down into Castle Corner. He's got him on the inside. Dunkley has to make a little bit of evasive action there and the sponsor needed Ford engine Mazda has gone to third. Is that Hepburn in the background? He's gone to the side of the road, he's lost second position. He stopped at the side of the track as Wyndham goes through in that first call for Telstar in first spot, but Neville Rousseau is chasing as they're going to Marlham there. He's in the inside as Wyndham. What's happened to Van Black? He spun to the outside all on his own. He was pushed by Johnny Eagle in the first one, and he's done it all on his own in the second. And Willie Hepburn unfortunately retires from this race. What a great pity he was doing so well in second spot. In with Ben Morgan Root up to third position as he heads for the S's. 190 k's an hour. Goes through the G-forces, three, four Gs of force as he gets thrown around inside that motor car, strapped in or not. Those big Goodyear tyres are really getting a grip on the road. He goes down the sweep. We're doing 210 k's an hour. He's in third gear as he starts this uh, straight, comes into view and he starts to accelerate down this long straight. He hasn't got a clutch at the moment. He swaps to top gear and he'll be approaching 300 k's an hour. Everything is starting to shake as he heads for the brake markers. He's gone past the first one. He's on to the second. Very, very close to the corner. Those big anchors come in. More G-forces as this car slows down from 300 k's an hour. We're up to 130 k's an hour. He's in first gear as we head towards the Conti Tunnel. First, he goes to second. That'll take him up to 195 k's an hour. Goes through the left hand, he's been over the tunnel, the Conti tunnel, high curves, you don't want to touch that one. As you go around the Conti complex, he's in first gear at the moment. He starts to accelerate, he's going to be on his way to Marlon. This car can so easily get away, the G-forces are coming into play once again. It's a double left-hander ahead of him. It's the first one. And then he goes to the far side of the road, accelerating away. As he starts to pull out of there in first gear and head towards West Bank Corner. And that's what it's like having a lap with Ben Morganut as he closes on Peter Lindenberg. Lindenberg's got that Yates engine car. There's an RDI motor from the States. And Lindenberg certainly has got the power in that motor car. There's Morganut come through in third position. And Neville Rousseau, the Barnett's Auto Spares car, has closed right up on uh, Steve Wyndham. These are two Cape Townians. They know each other's driving so well. Rousseau's been a saloon car champion down the Western Province. This is his first look at the circuit. And Patrick Seddon is coming into sight as well. So they're starting to close up in this cup class, these 400 horsepower motor cars. But Wyndham, what a piece of driving. So smooth. He hasn't put a wheel wrong today as he gets it sideways around the long sweep. They're doing upwards of 190 k's an hour. One mistake from Wyndham and he's going to be through Rousseau and Seddon going very nicely in third position. Here's Ray Wolford. He's, in, has, he's got problems, a seal leaking in the diff. He's starting to spray all onto his back tyre. But the stars and stripes forever are going for it. He's not slowing at all. And look at the smoke inside the car. And the nature of the boy says, keep pressing along. Motor sounds healthy and he's giving it a full go. The cup cars, it's still Wyndham. Rousseau's having a look-see in that bar Barnet Auto Spares car. Trying on the inside, Seddon's there in third position. Just waiting for one of those two cars to make any sort of a slip. Out of that corner in first gear. Up to second as they head for the Conti Tunnel. And the left-hander down the end. Wyndham is driving a defensive race. He's keeping Rousseau out, who's looking all the time. There's a long one, 180-degree hairpin. It's a fast one as they come around that and head up the little short straight towards Marlon. And that's how easy they can get away from you. That uh, Seddon nearly went off the track there. And Ray Wolford's getting it sideways as well. He wants to finish this race more than anything else. He's done. Here's from Martin in the front, opening up a gap. And Lindenberg sliding into view. He's under pressure from a fast closing. Morgan Root, he's one, one thing in his mind, and that's to get into second spot. He leads the championship at the moment. In a hurry, Gary Fomato, looking in control of that whole race. Lindenberg's there, he's got the speed. He pulls away from Morgan Root this time. Morgan Root's got to get under that back wing, down the long straight to slipstreaming, but it's been a difficult job up to now, as that car prepared by Jeff Mortimer 
of Peter Lindenberg has got such a turn of speed. But this time he's closer. Right under that flat wing. They've kept it flat there to give them more speed down the straight. And he's getting the toe. But Lindenberg just eases away a meter or two, but it's not going to be enough. And he keeps the defensive line on the right hand side of the road. No, he doesn't. He goes to the left. He opens the door for Ben Morgan, who comes, says thanks very much. Comes through on the inside and he's just made it into second position. Morgan Root has blasted his way into second position. And look at Lindenberg. He's not going to let him get away with it that easily. Formata in control, in charge. That motor sounding beautiful. Prepared by Johan Kutsi. And Morgan Root is now hurrying along. I don't think he's going to be able to catch Formato. It's sliding all the way around the Conti complex. Here's the cup cars and it's still Wyndham leading. But Rousseau is keeping the pressure up as they get onto the anchors. Lovely sound of those V8s throttling down through the gears. And Neville Rousseau, he's been a champion in the Western Province, as we say, he's no mean driver. This is his first look at the circuit. He's done very, very well on this high-speed track. Still Wyndham through the Conti uh, left-hander into the hairpin. They're going to be easily just feeding the power on and heading up that little short straight towards Marlham. And Ray Wilford is still smoking. The oil hasn't uh, got out of that diff yet. It's putting a lot of... Uh, oil onto that back tight, not worrying him, he's going to finish uh, if it's the last thing he does today. Formato in the front and Morgan Root is closing, he's getting away from Lindenberg. A great drive by this former champion in West Bank Modified Racing. Ben Morgan Root never gives up, in a hurry. Formato slides it this way, slides it towards, and listen to the scream of that, uh, that car of Morgan Root. Sounds absolutely different and beautiful on this high speed track. Lindenberg, he won the Formula One powerboat racing a week ago at the Hunter Beersport Dam, and he's putting in a tremendous drive here today. Larry Wolf at the Sonics uh, Opel is going well. He's very pleased with the performance of that car. Maybe a bit of too short a wheelbase for handling around the circuit. That's the gap between the three of them as Morgan Root starts to close. Desperately starting to close. He might have left it a wee bit late. He's still about 100 meters behind, and that's going to be too much as we get into the closing stages of this race. Larry Wolf a little bit further behind in fourth position. Just listen to that big motor at work. And a different sound there from Morgan Root's car. Not wasting any time around the corner. Rousseau's going for it again. This time he's trying another angle. It's not going to work as Wyndham defends his line down the middle of the road and keeps Neville Rousseau out. It's going to be two wins for Steve Wyndham if he can pull this one off. And Gary Formato into Marlham Corner for the last time is looking so good, relaxed, confident, and this is not going to be the last we've heard of this young man in the West Bank Modified Racing. But Morgan Root is keeping the pressure on as hard as he can. The time is running out. It's all over bar the shouting. Here comes Gary sliding into view. He's coming for his second win of the day as Pierre Van der gives him the flag. The cup cars are hurrying along just behind, coming out of the Conti sweep. Up to Marlham they go, and Rousseau's got two more chances to do it. Here's the first one. Round Marlham's a double left-hander. Just one little mistake from Steve Wyndham. He can certainly drive under pressure, can Wyndham. As he goes into West Bank for the last time, it's, that's going to be over by the shouting. Seddon's not too far behind. Another great drive there by this young man from Queenstown. That's Patrick Seddon. Wyndham does the double as well ahead of Rousseau and Patrick Seddon. Thrills for Gary Formato and his team that Gearmax Ford Telstar has done it with the Ford Falcon, the Sassel Ford Falcon of Ben Morgan Root in second position. No lap records this time, he's 0.1 of a second outside his lap record. It's Fords 1, 2 and 3 in the West Bank Challenge cars. Steve Windham and a Ford does a double for Ford in the West Bank Cup cars. They hit him never or so in the Barnett's Auto Spares Chev Opel Astra.